So I came across this video on YouTube on my recommended and I thought it would be quite an interesting one to make a reaction to, to look at it and learn a little bit more about Norway. This is Norwegian DNA, what's the genetic history of Norway? So yeah, interest is not a subject I really have any idea about, so re really looking to learn uh, about this, about the history of Norway in this, this way. Uh, let's check out. What is the genetic history of Norway and what haplogroups groups are common amongst Norwegians today? Scottish as well. Now, Norway first unified into a state in 872 AD under Harald Fairhair. And the English word Norway comes from an Old English word meaning Northern Way or Way Leading North. People with Norwegian ancestry live across the globe, including in the US, Canada and the UK. Now, the geography of Norway is actually a fascinating subject in and of itself. The country is made up of over 239,000 islands. With its territory stretching from Oslo in the south to the archipelago of Svalbard, way north into the Arctic Ocean. Norway also has claims to territories in the Antarctic region, namely Peter the First Island and Queen Maud Land, which is a section of the Antarctic. But what about Norway's genetic history? Well, during the last ice age, Norway was basically completely covered by ice, with these massive glaciers helping to create the incredible fjords we see today after the ice melted. The last ice age ended around 12,000 years ago, and early hunter-gatherers started moving back into this area over time. Now, there seem to be two main migrations of hunter-gatherers into Norway and Scandinavia in general over the millennia. As a 2018 study found that looked at the population genomics of Mesolithic Scandinavia, one migration came from the south, and these people were similar to Western hunter-gatherers. A later migration, however, came from the north, probably along the northern Norwegian coastal route, and these people were closer to Eastern hunter-gatherers. The mixture of these two hunter-gatherer populations created a group known as Scandinavian hunter-gatherers. This mixture created a range of different phenotypes, from light to dark hair and eye colours. But what about haplogroups around this time? Well, this 2018 study sequenced the genomes of seven hunter-gatherers from Scandinavia who lived between 9,500 and 6,000 years ago. This table shows the breakdown of their genetics. All seven belong to variations of U4 or U5 on the mitochondrial site, and all the men belong to variations of I2 on the Y-DNA site. A fascinating ancient culture that arose in parts of ancient Norway shortly after this time was the Pittedware culture, which existed from 3500 to 2300 BC. Although this culture was largely a maritime hunter-gatherer culture, a 2019 study argued that these people did adopt cultivation around 5000 years ago, using barley and wheat from around 3300 BC. They probably adopted these practices from the Funnel Beaker culture, an older culture that existed from around 4300 to 2800 BC, with the Funnel Beakers associated with the spread of farming into Scandinavia. The arrival of the first farmers into Norway saw an influx of ancestry from around Anatolia, as we know that the early European farmers originally came from Anatolia before spreading across Europe. Now, the third component in the ancient genetic history of Norway is the introduction of steppe ancestry that's connected to the Yamnaya culture of the Pontic Caspian steppe, a region around Ukraine that was introduced during the Bronze Age into Norway. An ancient people associated with the spread of the steppe ancestry into Scandinavia was the Battleaxe culture that existed from around 2800 to 2300 BC. It was an offshoot of the Corded Bear culture, and the Y-DNA haplogroup R1A was common amongst these people, with some belonging to R1B as well. The Battle Axe culture is considered by some to be a vector for the spread of the Indo-European language into Norway, as Norwegian is an Indo-European language like most other European languages. The Battle Axe culture is also connected to other peoples around this time, such as the Bell Beakers, which also had some impact on southern Norway, even though it originated in Iberia, which is quite remarkable. Mm. We know that the Bell Beakers Y-DNA haplogroup was dominated by R1B. Now, there was various other cultures around this time, but in the interest of not getting too bogged down, basically the ancient genetic history of Norway was comprised of three main components, Scandinavian hunter-gatherers, then early European farmers from around Anatolia, and then the steppe ancestry during the Bronze Age. But what about later migrations into Norway, and how did this change the genetics of the country? Well, an important people to note in the genetic history of Norway is the Sami who today live in northern regions of Norway, Sweden and Finland, and in the northwest of Russia. Now, the precise origins of the Sami are not 100% clear, 
Some sources suggest that they are descendants of ancient hunter-gatherer communities who settled in northern Scandinavia around 9,000 to 11,000 years ago. Other sources, however, argue that their ancestors were people who moved northwest from around the Ural Mountains in Russia and along the Volga River during the second millennium BC. Tell me more about the Sami as well. Like, it seemed like a really interesting people living in such a uh, like a hard place to live, especially that long ago. Like, it's like interesting to see like the origins of Norway and thinking about the 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 terrain, the weather, and that sort of thing. How they were actually able to do that must have been like really strong people. But the Sami still live there, still have their own unique culture. Tell me how they're thought of, I, I, like in Norway and other Scandinavian countries, Nordic countries. Do they have? Are they like treated the same as normal citizens of these countries? Do they have their own, their own rule? Uh, tell me more about them. Reaching the Finnish Lakeland around 1500 BC, and then moving out from there. Perhaps the truth is a mixture of these two origin stories. Regardless of their precise origins, we know that the Sami brought Uralic ancestry into ancient Norway, as the Sami speak Uralic languages as opposed to Indo-European languages. Other examples of Uralic languages include Finnish, Hungarian, Estonian, and other languages spoken in parts of Russia. Mm, so it's like they just made their way up there and just settled there. They never wanted to go any further down, is it? What about the genetics of the Sami, though? Well, the main Y-DNA haplogroup among Sami men is M1C, with this haplogroup common amongst people who live in northern Siberia as well. On the maternal side, V and U5B are common mitochondrial haplogroups amongst them. The presence of this Uralic ancestry in the north of Norway and Scandinavia in general is the main reason for the genetic differences between northern and southern populations in modern Scandinavia. A 2023 study published in Cell, for instance, they looked at the genetic history of Scandinavia from the Roman Iron Age to the present and analysed nearly 300 ancient genomes and over 16,000 modern individuals, found that this division was very old. This north-south division was in Scandinavia since at least the Viking period, and perhaps even before this, with the major driver of this division being varying levels of Uralic ancestry. Now, one of the most famous episodes in Norwegian history is the Viking period, of course, where Norse people went Viking to various parts of the map. But how did the genetics of Norway change during this period? Now, the Viking age is generally dated from the 8th to the late 11th centuries, and we know that the gene flow during this time wasn't just in one direction. The Vikings didn't just spread Scandinavian ancestry to other countries. Foreign genetics changed Scandinavia itself. We know that Norway saw an increase in British-Irish ancestry during the Viking Age. This 2023 study that looked at the genetic history of Scandinavia found that there was various reasons for this, ranging from the forced migration of slaves to the voluntary immigration of more high-ranking individuals such as Christian missionaries and monks. Now, whereas other parts of Scandinavia saw an increase in ancestry from the Baltic area in southern Europe, it seems that the main change in Norway was this increase in British-Irish ancestry. Another finding from this study was that although the majority of this increase in this British-Irish ancestry was during the Viking Age, this British-Irish gene flow into Scandinavia began at least as early as the 5th century, during the Anglo-Saxon migration to the British Isles. This finding again demonstrates how many movements of people there were after the collapse of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century AD, with gene flow also moving north. But what about later changes to Norwegian genetics? Well, there has obviously been various instances of mixing between the different Scandinavian populations over time, and there has been numerous examples of Norway entering unions with other powers that encouraged this mixing. There was the Kalmar Union, for example, that existed from 1397 to 1523, a union that included the Scandinavian powers as well as other territories such as Orkney and Shetland for a period. Between the 16th and 19th century, Norway was in a union with Denmark as well as other northern countries such as Iceland. And after the Napoleonic Wars in the 19th century, there was a union between the kingdoms of Sweden and Norway until 1905, who were unified under a common monarch and foreign policy. There has also been movements of people from Finland into Norway as well. A notable wave of migration took place during the 16th and 17th centuries, for instance, when people migrated from parts of Finland into both Sweden and Norway, with these people known as the Forest Finns. 
There has also been some mixing with populations from Northern Europe as well, but this has been relatively limited. But what haplogroups are common amongst Norwegians today, and how did they speak to the historical migrations? Well, the most common Y-DNA haplogroup amongst Norwegians is I1, which is similar to other parts of Scandinavia. Other Y-DNA haplogroups common in Norway include R1A, associated with the Corded Bear culture, and R1B, associated with steppe ancestry in general. In northern Norway though, Y-DNA haplogroups such as N1C are more common due to the Sami presence. On the maternal side, H is once again the most common mitochondrial haplogroup, <coughs> similar to Western Europe. Other mitochondrial haplogroups found in Norway include variations of U, such as U5, with the Sami often having the mitochondrial haplogroup U5B1B. K, J, T and V are amongst the other mitochondrial haplogroups found in Norway. Overall, Norwegians are genetically closest to Swedes and Danes and have some genetic affinities with populations like the Irish due to the Viking Age. To the north though, the higher levels of Uralic ancestry amongst the Sami mean that some people in Norway have a closer affinity to the Finns and people across Siberia. Very but speaking diverse. of the Swedes, what is the genetic history of Sweden? To find out, please click here. Mm, very interesting, like so well researched and so interesting. Like, tell me if you know any of that. Being Norwegian, does it make sense to you when you even like see people when you know about their backgrounds and things like that? About have you ever had like a DNA test to check your ancestry to see, yeah, how what the origins of it? Like, so cool. Uh, great insight. Great to see the or like interesting to see the difference between the north and south of the country as well, how it varies, see all the historical influences and causes of this. Awesome documentary, go subscribe to that channel, great work, it was very well researched and presented. Tell me what you think about the findings in it, thanks.